will now recognize myself for five minutes for an opening statement. Today, we will examine the implementation of three federal natural resource laws, the Indian Reorganization Act, known as I IRA, the Wilderness Act, and the Federal Land Management and Federal Land Policy and Management Act, also referred to as FLIPMA. The Constitution grants res responsibility to the legislative branch to enact our nation's laws and charges the executive branch with carrying them out in accordance with congressional intent. However, as we will hear today, that's not often the case in how things work out. For too long, federal agencies have been permitted to disregard congressional intent and implement the laws Congress passes, sometimes ignoring the law's original purposes. This affront to the separation of powers must be stopped, and we must, st and we must look to curbing uh, abused by the executive branch and reasserting power over the unelected bureaucracy. And that's why we're holding this hearing today. While our focus this morning is on the implementation specific, specifically of the IRA, the Wilderness Act, and FLIPMA, today's hearing could have examined the wayward implementation of any number of different statutes within the committee's jurisdiction. The subcommittee will continue to identify and bring to light other similar bureaucratic abuses. Ensuring the proper application of the laws Congress passes should be a lot more simple than it has been in the past. However, as we will hear today, that's not how federal agencies operate. Take, for instance, the manner in which the Department of the Interior implements the IRA. In 2009, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that the IRA's, uh, limit, that IRA uh, limits Interior's ability to accept land into trust on behalf of Native American tribes to only those tribes that were under federal jurisdiction when it was enacted in 1934. This is clearly stated in the law itself. Yet apparently, Interior has considered the Supreme Court's mandate to be a mere advisory opinion because in 2014, its solicitor issued a memo that effectively allows Interior to define the meaning of under federal jurisdiction however it pleases. During the previous administration, Interior informed this committee that it did not maintain a list of tribes that were under federal jurisdiction when it was enacted, and that it didn't intend to prepare one either. To date, this committee has not been able to identify, nor has Interior been able to provide a single instance where a land into trust application has been denied on account of the tribes not being under federal jurisdiction in 1934. This morning, we'll also hear how federal land management agencies routinely fail to take into account the perspective of local communities that will be most significantly affected by their decisions. Instead, Interior has allowed land management decisions to be influenced by DC bureaucrats and out of touch litigation brought by environmental advocacy groups. This subcommittee heard these concerns time and time again during the previous administration and it is my hope that the federal land management agencies will now refocus their implementation of the laws such as the Wilderness Act and FLIPMA as they were intended. FLIPMA's mandate for our public lands to be managed on the basis of multiple use and sustained yield may seem like a term of art to many, but those who have lived and relied upon the land for generations know that this principle is critical. It's critical not only to their income, their way of life, and their communities, but also to our nation ensuring that we will all benefit from a stable food supply, energy supply, and economic security. However, the overregulation of an administratively designed, designated wilderness study areas, areas of crit critical environmental concern, and decades-long withdrawals of mineral leases undermine the notion of multiple use, impacting all of us throughout our nation. I would like to thank our witnesses for being here today to lend their perspectives as we delve into the impacts of these expanded laws, and I look forward to hearing your testimony. I'm, I now recognize the ranking member.